Welcome everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and uh, today we're going to be doing a unit overview. We're going to be covering the T-34-85. This is probably my favorite Soviet tank from the Bagration book, the Soviet late war book. I really like the tank. I really think it looks cool. The T-34-85 turret is just uh, an awesome looking um, machine in my book. Uh, the Soviets built over 50,000 of these things. They built a ton of them and they were used all the way through the Korean War and beyond. Um, the T-34 really had some long legs as far as uh, survivability. So it's kind of cool. It's an iconic tank. It's right up there with the Sherman and the Panzer IV as uh, you know the tanks you think about when you think about medium tanks in World War II. So the T-34-85 is I'll say it again, my favorite tank in the Bagration book. And that's in part because of its stats. I think it has some really good stats. Um, I think the only thing that might be able to compare to it would be the uh, Su-85M um, with the same gun. But uh, I, I really like the T-3485. All right, let's talk, uh, let's talk stats, shall we? So just like if you saw last week's uh, T-34 unit overview, there are lots of variations, lots of different ways you can take the T-3485 in your uh, list. And basically there are two paths. You could take a T-34 tank company, which is just pure T-34 85s. <clears throat> you could take a Hero T-34 85 millimeter tank company. Or in the um, T-34 companies, you can upgrade X number of T-34s, half of them, to T-34 85s. So you have lots of different ways you can get T-34 85s into your list, which is good because the T-34 85 is an awesome tank. Then you can also upgrade the, any of those that we talked about to guards, and we'll talk about what the guards upgrade does in a minute. Let's uh, let's talk about basic stats though. We're talking about the T thirty four eighty five. We've got a hit on three plus, just like almost all Soviet armor. Hit on a three plus. Front armor six, side armor five, top armor one. Just like the normal T thirty four, they didn't really upgrade the armor uh, to any appreciable degree. Speed-wise, tactical is still 12 inches, so it still moves like um, a light tank. You know, most medium tanks move 10 inches. Terrain dash 16, cross country 24, road dash is 28. So, and the cross check of 2 plus, we can't overlook the cross check of 2 plus, which is amazing for any tank. Uh, then you have the uh, weapon, which is a 85 millimeter gun with a range of 28 inches. Halted rate of fire of 2, moving rate of fire of 1, anti-tank 12, 3 plus firepower. And if you notice, for a Soviet gun, there's nothing in the notes field. There's no overworked or anything like that. So that gun just shoots with no penalty, whether it's moving or halted. So two shots halted, one shot moving. Anti-tank 12, 3 plus firepower. Then motivation-wise, here's where motivation and skill gets different depending on what you're taking. For a regular T-34-85 company, you have a confident motivation, a 3-plus, not one step back, last stand check, and then a skill of 5-plus, a very sad skill of 5-plus. Or you could take the hero version, which is all the same stats, except you get a confident of 4-plus without the not one step back, but you do get a skill of four plus and a tactics rating of three plus, which can help with movement orders. Then you can also upgrade these guys to guards. And again, guards, um, we talked about this in the T-34 video, will improve your last stand rating and get that up to a three plus and give you a rally uh, and remount value of 3 plus as well. Otherwise, these guys would be uh, 4 plus for, you know, they'd be 4 plus for remounting and rallying. So the guard upgrade can really improve that, but it does add quite a few points. Um, it does, it's like 4 points for each company you take. And remember, 
a company is equivalent to a platoon in an American or German force. So keep that in mind. So the T-3485, though, pretty good stats. The armor is not the best. Um, again, you're the same armor as a vanilla Sherman. You're the same armor as a Panzer IV. But that anti-tank 12 gun can make up for a lot. So let's take a look at some of the things you might be encountering with your T-3485s. We'll start with the Panzer IV, Stug, or Tiger. Now there are plenty of other German vehicles you might face, but these are the models I had handy and it's a pretty good range of what you can face. All right, so if you remember, the T-34 was a pretty bad matchup against all of these tanks. But the T-3485 with that anti-tank 12 gun is a game changer because the AT-11 on a Panzer IV versus Front Armor 6 versus anti-tank 12 versus Front Armor 6. So once you add all the plus or minuses at short range, the T-3485 is one number better, meaning that <clears throat> to penetrate a, a Panzer IV, you, well, an AT-12 versus front number 6 means the German needs to roll a 6 to equal. Okay. The T-3485, anti-tank 11 versus front number 6, means if he rolls a 5, he equals. If he rolls a 6, he bounces. So when you look at it that way, he needs a 6 plus to have something good happen. He needs a 5 plus to have something good happen, either an equal or a bounce. I like to look at that as, you know, that's almost twice as effective defensive wise with that one, with that one pip. Um, so keep that in mind. The T-34 has the ability to bounce his shot, where the Panzer IV does not have the ability to bounce, only equal the T-3485. All right. The humble Stug. The front armor 7 of the Stug kind of changes the, the equation a little bit. Because anti-tank 11, sorry, he has anti-tank 11 versus front armor 6. Anti-tank 12 versus front armor 7. It's basically the same shift. They're both going to need 5 to equal and a 6 plus to bounce. So when that happens, it comes down to, to hit values to see who's better. Typically, unless you're facing uh, trained SS, these guys are hit on fours. These guys are hit on threes. So even though you have a better gun, if you have a battle line of Stugs versus the same number of T-34 85s, the Stugs are probably going to win in a, you know, a across the field shootout. Um, they're just going to hit more often which means they're going to fail their saves more often, which means they're going to lose. So keep, keep that in mind, even though the T-3485 is an awesome tank, against the Stug at, at range, you know, just in a regular fight, it's not a winning proposition. Then we have the Tiger. So the Tiger's interesting. For number 9 on the Tiger, anti-tank 12. So the um, Tiger, if it's hit... If it rolls a 1 or 2, it's going to be penetrated at short range. A 3 equals. For the amount of points you're paying for your Tiger, that's really not great odds. You know, sure, 4 plus, you're going to bounce. So 50% of the time, you're going to bounce. But as you see when Jake and I play, when you have that, you know, I need a 3 to equal and a 4 to bounce, you're going to roll a 1 or 2 and lose your very expensive Tiger. Um, so that's something to consider. Firing back, though, it's just bad for the T-3485. The T-3485 does not get a save, anti-tank 14 versus front armor 6, either at short or long range. So it would just go straight to the 3-up firepower. The other thing to consider when you're battling is all of these tanks, these German tanks, have superior range to your T-3485. And I think this is one of the biggest handicaps that the, the Soviets have, in my experience, having played them pretty much nonstop for almost the last year. The 
These guys have a 32 inch range. The Panzer IV and the Stug. The Tiger and the Panther, which I don't have on the table, have a 40 inch range. That massively outranges the T-34. So normally you're gonna have to weather at least one round of shooting where you can't shoot back before you can even get into range to start shooting. And that, again, messes with your odds in, in combat. Now, once you get into combat, and let's say you do get into knife fighting range, well, these guys have a side armor 3 versus anti-tank 12, so if I do get behind you, um, they cannot stop that shot. That shot just goes right through and straight to a 3-plus firepower to destroy. Against the Tiger, the Tiger's side armor is 8, so that's still pretty good against AT-12. You need a 4 to equal, and then a 5 or 6 to bounce. So it's not the best. You never want to let a T-34 or 85 get to your side, um, but you, it's still survivable. You still get a saving throw, which is rare for, uh, you still get a decent saving throw, which is rare for shots uh, on your flanks. So that's something to consider getting into knife fighting range. So these, uh, these German tanks, since they outrange you, um, that can be very hard. Now, how do you counteract that? If you're attacking as a Soviet player, I recommend the under the cover of smoke card where you can lay a smoke screen at the beginning of the battle and get your tanks as close as possible to that smoke line so that they can burst through on turn two or turn three and avoid that long-range shooting that's going to attrit your, uh, your T-34s before they even get into range. Another thing is using concealment and cover. Since T-34 of both the flavors, the 85 and 76 millimeter, have a two plus cross check, they can pretty much drive through woods without too much trouble. Um, you know, you might have the occasional fail on a cross check, but with the two plus, you're gonna get through. So you can use a combination of cover and uh, to, to close the range to those Germans and get, get your grips on them. Um, another thing to consider too is the mixed formation. So in the T-34 company, if you have six T-34s, you could upgrade, I'm just using six as an example, you could upgrade half of them to T-3485. So you might have a company, T-3485, T-34 company that looks like this. And this is pretty good because if you do need to charge across the open, the Germans obviously would target your T-3485s, they'd be crazy not to. But on a 3+, plus, you can swap those hits to these weaker tanks. And if they don't shoot at these, I mean, if, if they destroy your T-3485s, these can still be a threat on the side to German mediums like those. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. I do like uh, the T-3485 a lot. I do think it brings a lot to the, the table, so to speak. Um, and I like all the variations of them, the companies. I like running this, like you see here. The hero version of this would be, I think you max out at four. So you could take two T-34s and two T-3485s. And that would be the hero T-34 company. And it does get confusing. It would be this card if you have your cards. If you take a dedicated like a Hero T-3485 company, it's just T-3485, so you don't have the option to mix in your T-34s. So as you can see, like in the Bagration book, there's like four different lists that you can take that have T-3485s in them or the majority of them. And I think the medium self-propelled artillery company uses a T-34 as an HQ unit, which um, is, is cool as well. All right, so T-3485, should you use them? I say yes. Um, I think they are really solid tanks. They're a tank with a high enough AT that the Germans can't ignore them. So they do tend to attract a lot of firepower. So they can be a, um, a good addition to like an infantry company or an infantry battalion with an attached 
unit of T-3485s. That can be pretty scary. The fact that these guys are like light tanks, and I say light tanks because in the previous versions of Flames of War, light tanks moved faster than medium tanks and slow tanks only moved 8 inches. I think medium tanks moved 12 and light tanks moved 16. In version 4 they scaled that back, but in essence medium tanks are 10, certain heavy tanks are 8, and light tanks are 12. So these guys move like a light tank. They move 12 inches. Uh, and that and the cross check are some of their greatest um, benefits. So I'd recommend at least one uh, unit of T3485s in, in your arsenal. Now you could also do what, what I did. I only have 11 or 12 of these guys, but I painted up the, the turrets for both. So I just have a box of extra turrets so that I can swap them out and make, you know, just make them whatever. So I can make 12 T3485s, 12 regular T34s, or mix and match them if I, if I want to. Um, yeah, it was more work painting because I had to paint two turrets for every tank hull. But the kit was nice because it came with those pieces. So that was good on Battlefront to give us basically both options in the book because the hull is the same. You know, the hull is the same. All right, so that's my opinion. If you couldn't tell, I like the T-3485. I recommend it to those who are looking for a unit to start with. I think they are a decent... If you want to go tanks, I think T-34s and T-3485s should be your first stop, primarily T-3485s. Um, in the late war environment, I think AT-12 is necessary. And even with AT-12, you might need something or some other plan to deal with uh, heavy tanks, but in a pinch AT-12 can deal with those as well So there you go guys. That is a look at the T-34-85 from the Soviet Bagration book I hope you enjoyed this if you did and want to see more unit overviews Please let me know down in the comments below Also do consider giving us a like and subscribe that really helps the channel Clicking that bell to receive notification when we publish new content is always appreciated if you like our Flames of War content Please do check out our Patreon. I'll put a link down in the video description below. And there, patrons get access to a battle report exclusive to them every month. And we have quite a good backlog. I've used the T-3045 in several battle reports on the Patreon, so you can check them out. Uh, so there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.